Hi, welcome. My name is Rose. I'm a bookseller here at Literati Bookstore. We are so pleased to welcome Shelley Johannes to our At Home with Literati series in support of More Than Sunny. She'll be joined in conversation by Jarrett Lerner. Just a quick webinar overview for our attendees. The chat is closed, but you may want to keep the chat window open during the event, as I will be dropping links to purchase More Than Sunny from Literati throughout the event. You can also use the Q&A feature on your toolbar to submit questions at any time, and I will ask a selection at the conclusion of their conversation. A reminder, you can also shop for more books at literatibookstore.com for curbside pickup if you live in Southeast Michigan, or to have shipped to your home anywhere in the United States. In lieu of a book purchase, we also ask that you consider a $5 donation to sustain our virtual programming. Whether you'd like to think of it as this week, this month, or this year's subscription to our programming, you can make donations at literatibookstore.com slash donation. Otherwise, we simply thank you for your attendance this evening or this morning or afternoon, depending on where in the world you may be joining us. And now allow me to introduce tonight's author and our moderator. Shelley Johannes is the author illustrator of Beatrice Zinker, Upside Down Thinker chapters book series. A former architectural designer, she has a fondness for tracing paper, process, and accidental discoveries. She and her family live in Michigan with the two feathered friends, Max and Alex, who make every day sunny and birdie. More Than Sunny is her debut picture book. Jarrett Lerner is the author of Engineers: Revenge of the Engineers, The Engineers Strike Back, Giger the Robot Goes to School, and Giger the Robot Lost and Found, as well as the author illustrator of the activity books, Give This Book a Title and Give This Book a Cover. Jarrett is also the author, author illustrator of the forthcoming Hunger Heroes graphic novel series. He co-founded and helps run the MG Book Village, an online hub for all things middle grade, and is the co-organizer of hashtag kids need books and hashtag kids need mentors projects. Again, thank you. Welcome. We are so excited. Have a good conversation. Thanks. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Um, I'm Shelly Johannes, and it means so much to me that you guys took time out of your night to hang out with us. And I'm so thankful that um, Jarrett agreed to be here and hang out with me and chat tonight, too. And I know we're going to have a great conversation. I just wanted to say a big thank you for all of you out there for supporting me and for supporting More Than Sunny and just being awesome people. So thanks. And thank you from me, too, for having me here um, and in inviting me to be a part of your special day, Shelly. Um, I, I'm a huge fan. And when you when you asked me to do this, I was so excited. I immediately had 8 billion questions. So um, should I just get started and start sure. asking you some questions? <laughs> Go for um, it. <laughs> so thank you for, for having me. Um, I'm excited to talk about this book. So the first thing I thought I would ask you is sort of, it seems logical to start about where this book came from, where it originated, because I know it's been a long time coming and, and you've been working on it for a long time. So I'd love to sort of hear the origin of it way back when, how did, how did it begin? So it began all the way back in, I think it was 2013, which seems really wow. crazy. Um, my, um, my oldest kid who's now 15 was a first grader. Wow. And it seems nuts how long, like the trajectory of, of a book, it, it really is amazing how long it takes. Um, but we were um, working on a school project that he had where he was doing one of those weather charts that just had, like you're supposed to be graphing it and how many sunny days, cloudy days, snowy days, rainy days, all the basic stuff. And I had just been looking at it as a task to check off, like let's quickly look outside and see what it is so we can mark it down. I think I pictured it almost like I'm not a huge math and science person, so I just viewed it as this mundane activity. And instead he looked outside and it was winter, um, but he looked outside and goes, oh, it's sunny and birdie today. And he was just so excited. And we have bird feeders right outside our window. And he was just turned around watching the birds. And then I was too. And I just immediately was just so um, delighted and kind of thrown out of, my like boredom of life and right. but it just seemed like so both that it made us pay attention to what was going on outside and created a moment of wonder um but also I thought it was just so clever to make a new kind of weather like it's not sunny um it's sunny and birdie and so I was just super thrilled about it and we watched the birds for a while and even just on that statement I kind of cataloged it in my brain 
But then the next day he looked outside and he's like, oh, it's windy and squirrely today. And I'm like, all right, this is totally has to be a book. <laughs> and at that point in my life, I, um, I wasn't a writer. I, I mean, I was always wanted to write, but I hadn't like really pursued it. Um, I had, since I had, like, I think probably from the time he was maybe in preschool, I realized my dream would be to make picture books, but I just didn't know how to do that. So I was paying attention to ideas, but I didn't really know if I could ever make it into something. So just for fun, we wrote down a bunch of weather that could go with a bunch of different animals just for having fun together. And then I kind of just tucked that list away thinking maybe this will be something someday. Um, but I wasn't like connected to it enough where it didn't feel like a piece of who I was yet, if that makes sense, where I wanted it to be like the book I tried to make, but I knew it was interesting and it like made me endlessly curious, but mm -hmm. I didn't know what I would eventually uh, do with it. But I feel like I have to show a picture of him at that age. Just yes, because he's I, I agree. <laughs> Let's see if I can get my. While you're pulling it up, I just want to say that that moment of of being sh shocked out of your mundane, jaded life by a kid. My wife and I were talking about it the other day. We were driving, listening to music. All our whole family we were dancing to some loud music. She's really into Beyonce right now. So, <laughs> <Awesome>. Oh, <laughs> so cute. Aww. You can keep going with your. <laughs> I was just say, yeah. So we're all dancing and we're stopped at a red light and the wind blows and we're all dancing and the wind's blowing and there's flowers outside of her windows. And my daughter just goes, my three and a half year old, she goes, even the flowers are dancing. Aww. And it was one of those moments where I'm just like, how come I can't see the world like that at, at all times? And like, yeah. it just reminded me of that moment where you're shocked out of your, your mundane adultness by a kid like, the kid on the screen right now saying yes. birdie. Yeah, that's what I mean. I just love that about kids. And it's part of the joy of writing for kids is getting to be with more kids because as much as I as an adult want to be that child like in my wonder all the time, it's so easy to get distracted from that. And they just come by it so honestly and so easily. And so this is him when he was that age and right after that when we talked about it maybe being a book he had me take this picture because he wanted it to be his author photo oh my god that's great. and it just like melts my heart and um he sold me the rights to his idea oh because <laughs> he's always been a little entrepreneur and so he said very, i could have the rights for five bucks and a book dedication <laughs> very very kind of him what a generous guy yeah. So he, and he held me to it too. He, he has the book dedication and he wanted to make sure the dedication actually listed out his original words so that he got, he got his credit. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. So that's so great. It, and I feel like it makes, uh, the, it makes reading it even more meaningful to know that it came from this moment. And, you know, those are the sorts of inspirational moments that we all like hunt for and are desperate for in our lives, even though it then takes years to make the book. Yes. Um, so that sort of leads into another one of the question I, I have is, you know, I know that stories take shape and change shape and change form over, over time, over years. Yeah. Um, but was the, was the seasonal arc of this story always planned like the, the, the whole, the year long sort of seasonal arc or was it, yeah, I'd be curious. I was curious if that was included from the beginning. Strangely, it was. Even from that first day when I wrote things down for him, once we wrote down a bunch of weather and animal pairings, I tried to put it in an order of a year because it seemed to make sense to me that way. Yeah. And that part did kind of always stay. Um, I think I might, let me see here. I'll pop up my little screen again here. Um. Two years after um, I had made that list with him originally, um, then I had started Beatrice and I um, had my agent already had the book deal for Beatrice and um, I had been just playing around with um, watercolors messing around while I was waiting on some stuff and then my agent said well what if this girl and her dog might have a story and right away when he said that I thought of the weather words from two years before that and so I started thinking maybe that was a way in because when I was a um, 
when I was a kid, I loved my dog. And before I had the dog, I wanted the dog more than anything. And so I immediately, it gave the weather words a different layer of meaning to me right away, picturing a girl and her dog in the weather. Uh Um, And so that, this version of it was the first full storyline through, and it was just very simple and sparse um, going through. It still had like a sing-songiness to it, but it was Mm -hmm. Like there wasn't enough story there, but at least it like started to hint at what it could be. And it ended up with the line, every day is lucky. And lucky was the name of her dog. I felt like it it sort of started to hint at the idea of like the beauty of every day, every day is lucky. Um, It still had a long way to go, (laughs) but that's kind of where it started. And it's still at that point, it always went from a morning to a night Mm -hmm. and through the seasons. And it always had that element to it. Yeah, I I was uh, so w- w- when it first opened up. Well, when I fir- the first time I read it, which we actually were talking about the other day, the excitement of not knowing what's going to happen in a book yes. and going in totally fresh. I had all these ideas about if it was going to be a day, and I was I was sort of surprised when, it, in a delightful, excited way, when we were moving through um, a longer season, um, or, or you know, the seasons and through yeah. a whole year. Um, it really excited me, and and it it made me feel like it was more of a story and it was not just a story about these kids, but sort of about seasons and about weather and about a year and time. Um, so when, when did the, when did the sibling enter the picture? So the sibling entered it maybe on its fourth round. Um, let me see. I'll pop back to my thing here. Cause it's nice to see visuals. Um, the second round or the third round of it, um, I ended up adding the mom in because um, my agent was suggesting um, to kind of go back to that original moment between me and my son and like the joy of that together Mm -hmm. and to loosen things up. And so that was kind of the next round. And then the artwork was still too reminiscent of Beatrice. And so we talked about how to maybe differentiate and find a style that was still me, but not the same as Beatrice. So when I went into the next round, I tried to figure out the story a little more. I was going to add in more family and try to kind of discover what the artwork would be. And that's when the brother entered the story. And also the brother was helping me solve a problem in my third version. I have the girl waking up the mom saying, you know, it's sunny. And the mom saying sunny and early. And when a parent's being a downer, it yeah. doesn't have like a fun, playful quality. Like it's harder to make that come across. And I was like, oh, if it's a brother, it comes across so differently in like a different tone. So that was another advantage to kind of adding in a sibling. And it just made yeah. the whole dynamic shift in a good way. Like right away, I could tell it was the right thing to do. Yeah. So and that's kind of when he entered. And speaking of, I love seeing all these process picks. I'm, I'm, a, I'm such a process nerd. I could look at that all day. But this is one of my favorite little bits. This and, you know, this little back and forth is, I've read this probably like 8,000 times with my daughter. <laughs> now she, she's very into it, but I love this back and forth. The sunny and hot, is that all you've got? It's mm-hmm. sort of just like it, it there, there's just, you get the whole relationship between these two, this sort of loving sibling relationship just in a single little back and forth. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, I just... Uh, it's it's so fascinating to to hear what existed before because now this book is imprinted on my mind yeah. and I'm like, it has to be this you, you the brother wasn't there what would you do with the brother but okay. I forgot he wasn't there either until I was looking back and I'm like oh weird the brother wasn't there and the mom wasn't there I had already forgotten myself um, yeah but I liked right away I liked that the brother was reluctant and she's exuberant because. I liked it kind of metaphorically of like, we all are both of those people sometimes. And yeah, some of us kind yeah. of play the roles of each of those more predominantly. But I know like, usually I'm that exuberant person, like trying to show people the bright side, but not always there's times when you're down or whatever. And like, I really appreciate the people in my life who are knocking on my door and like pulling 100%. me and saying, look at this good thing. And so I liked the idea of playing with both of them getting to be in that role occasionally. and. Um, I don't just so you could kind of talk about how we do that for each other and that yeah. sometimes they'd be doing that for the parents and 
because that's kind of the beauty of a family or even any relationships that you have is that we get to point each other to the good thing when we can't do it ourselves for whatever reason. That, that is, that is uh, my wife's and my relationship in, in some, um, you know, I'd be like, it's like, well, I wake up earlier than her, but I'd be like, you know, whatever. And she's like, look at this thing. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's magical. So she is that for me. So that's also what I thought of, you know, she's the one pointing everything out to me and I'm so grateful for it. It makes every day a little more magical. Um, so I was going to ask you more specifically about some of the art. Oh, sure. So um, the artwork is um, insane. It's, it's, it's incredible. Um, and the, the thing about this artwork, and you get a sense of it in, in the Beatrice books, but not to the same extent, is there, there is such like a depth and layered quality um, to your art. And it's not just about like, you know, it's not shading. It's just, I feel like you, the depth comes from you can see you can see all these different materials and it, it just feels like you're building layers and mm -hmm. I, I would love to hear I don't know if you have any picks about this process but I would love to hear you just like talk about one favorite illustration or just sure. talk about sort of how it how it's built because it really like I know you have the background in architecture but it looks like to me when I'm thinking about it it looks like you're building layer upon layer upon layer of of mark and, and it's, it's, it's endlessly interesting to look at. And I would just love to hear about how it comes about. Well, thank you. That's so interesting so, since it really is made out of so many layers because I don't know, I'm sure you've probably heard me say before how I love to work on tracing paper. Yeah. Um, since my background is architecture um, and I was an architectural designer, I always love working on tracing paper because it's, besides that it's translucent, it's also like slippery and um, not precious. like. I like that it keeps me loose because it's a, I'm used to using it as something that you can throw away. And so it keeps me from taking things too seriously. But I also like how marker and colored pencil work on tracing paper. Um, they kind of become almost watercolor like on it and you can layer things on it. But I also like work in pieces like that. So I like I have just piles of tracing paper and usually each illustration is made up of tons and tons of pieces on tracing paper that all get scanned and compiled. Um, and let me see if I can find a good uh, image to show. Sometimes it takes it a second to register. Yeah, no problem. I'm just trying to find, I mean, I could, I could pick any one of these, but it, it's just, it, it I looks, have some good images if it will pop up. I don't, let's see here. Yeah, there, I, think it's, I think it's the fact that you also use different, so many different materials, such a variety, and you sort of never know what, what's, what's gonna be used and what's gonna come. And it just really adds this sort of richness and, and depth. L layered is the only way I can really describe it is I feel like I'm sinking into it and there's all of these uh, d different like qualities of mark on on the page. Thank you. Are you able to see it yet or no? Yeah, I see your I see your workspace. Okay, cool. Let me see if I can find stuff then. Let's see here. And I think we've talked about this before, but I think one of the reasons we get along so well is that we're both obsessed with post-it notes because <laughs> I know that does help. <laughs> I, I do feel like a kinship with that. anyone who loves post-its. Um, all right, let me see. I've got, so when I, before I started final artwork, oh wow, I, I already liked the artwork that I finally got to. I finally got to this loose artwork that like at first when I was trying not to be like Beatrice, I think I got too tight for a while. And then I finally found this way that was like loose and it felt like me, but not Beatrice. Um, and I liked it, but then all of a sudden I got this feeling like, well, this is my debut picture book and I'm about to start final artwork. And is this what I want my art to be? This is my moment to like pause and make sure that I'm like pushing myself to make it the best I can be. So I went to the art store and just grabbed a bunch of things I had never used before. So I was used to using marker and colored pencil, but instead I grabbed like in addition to that, a bunch of different types of pastels um, 
and like pan pastels and oil pastels and chalk pastels and colored pencils and crayons that I wasn't familiar with and just anything that looked interesting to me. And then I just started messing around and immediately I was like in new territory, even though it wasn't like hugely different than what I was doing. It was enough that it felt like play and um, everything felt like an experiment. And so I liked kind of entering into it in that manner. And then I had to decide like, okay, I kind of like how I was doing things, but do I want to do it any different? And I just started doing tons of experiments. So for a lot of the things I used a layer of um, marker and a lot of times different markers mixed together. And then over the top of it was a pastel, like the doors are made out of um, like a layer of um, marker, but then past like a lighter pastel over the top of it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And it was kind of fun just to take a moment and play around with um, just all the different, kind of just experiment. So this picture is a good, like shows how it's all these different pieces. And in my rough art, I had used the computer sometimes to add backgrounds. And then I just decided to challenge myself to see if I could do it all by hand, even though it would be pieced together mm -hmm. digitally. I just thought maybe I could I would push myself further if I tried to do more of it by hand. So you can kind of see, I think this one, there's a final one. This is one, like a nighttime scene when she's getting woken up and there's like what my office looks like during it. There's just piles wow. and piles of tracing paper. Um, and then, so all those pieces became this um, illustration. And so it's just lots of scanning, lots of hours of scanning all these little pieces. But I, I like working in the tiny pieces because it makes me just, never feel like it's the final thing because I get real I can like um psych myself out if I get too tight because I'm thinking oh this is my real final artwork I better be careful and that makes me not make work that I want and so just knowing that I could draw it again or even that little piece again makes Easily. me just yeah stay way more loose not knowing like even you'll see how many like how many bed frames I drew and I wouldn't even know which one I was going to use until I scanned them all and then I would play right. around with the pieces so yeah, kind of. I, I, I love, uh, and I, I love how you incorporate, uh, you purposely incorporated play into your process. Cause that's something that I try to do, encourage other people to do, to do, because, you know, I feel like you artists, uh, are really good at getting in their own way, thinking too much and getting in their own way and incorporating play is sort of like forcing yourself back into that more childlike state that we were talking about, wishing we could access more on a regular basis, you know, forcing yourself into that playful experimentation yes. and, uh, you know, willingness to take risks and just see what happens. Yeah. I was uh, like finding that way to like make it feel low risk to take a risk, you know, like <laughs> finding that way to trick your, I always think half of like both writing and art is like tricking myself into relaxing. Yes. And then that's when you produce the good work is when I'm not trying or I'm not thinking too hard and yeah, just like even the way that, I, I'm sorry. I was gonna say just shutting off that part of your brain. Yes, yeah. And, and getting new materials is like the fastest way for me to let go and just have fun again. Yeah, and it's sort of like, it's sort of forcing a, a hyper attentiveness because you're not like, oh, I know what kind of mark this makes. You're, yes. you're, you're very uh, aware. And I just, just an aside, I just noticed that even though the text changed, the owl that was in the first draft sort of remained in there, um, which is a cool little thing to see. I uh, can't believe how many aspects, even in the early ones, did pull through, which yeah. is always intriguing to me when, even I forget when I look at the book, it looks really simple. And I forget that it took since 2013. <laughs> and yeah. then when I looked back through, it's just intriguing how to get something simple, it takes a long time. It almost takes I don't know, not to say more time, but it just takes time. And you can see all of the, ele like so many elements are there, but not cleanly yet. Or you needed to pick up new pieces along the way that would make those old elements work again. And I don't know, it's just fascinating to me how you can't go from point A to point B in a straight line, even yeah. though so many elements are there at the beginning, they're not there in the right order or they needed a bunch more pieces to fall into place for them to work. And so anyway, that yeah. process is so fascinating to me. And I sometimes think, uh, I sometimes think that uh, in order to finish a book, in order to bring it to completion, in order to get it where it needs to go, sometimes 
it's it's about just spending the time on it and trying all the different things. But I think it's also about in that whatever it is, two years, three years, you're growing as an artist, as a person. So you're seeing it differently. And I feel like you can grow into figuring out the right shape of a story, the right look for a story, the right feel of it. So sometimes I feel like we just have to wait and grow up almost, which yeah. is infuriating sometimes. <laughs> it can be frustrating, but it. I feel like this book um, taught me so much because I was working on it while I was working on Beatrice and like Beatrice will always be the most special thing in the world to me, but it was also stress because I had deadlines and I had to produce under pressure. And this would be the thing I would work on that was play. Cause yeah. it was like, when I didn't have it, I didn't, no one was asking for this. And so, um, so just mentally I was in a different place when I was working on it anyway, but just it, for some reason working on this book, I trusted the process more than I ever have. Just, I think I was starting to see process working with Beatrice and just the long arc of the story and it working out in the end. Um, one of my favorite quotes was when Matthew Winner was interviewing um, Kate DiCamillo and he was talking to her about, um, I think Ramey Nightingale, but about how there was this bird that showed up in the story and how did she know how she's going to tie it in and she said she didn't she just like throws all the balls in the air that come in her head and knows that the story will catch them yeah and that's my favorite way to think of things and just like believing that the story will catch them somehow so I felt like this in this one I trusted my instincts more I trusted the process more i also, um, my agent, Stephen, I think he might be watching. Hi, Stephen. Um, he's like the most amazing creative collaborator. And so I really like leaned into the back and forth of that creative relationship um, with it, like a total trust of like not feeling like I needed to prove myself and that every version of it, I could just lean into like, this is just this version of this thing along this long journey. And that then he, I knew he would give me a response that would put me back in play with a direction. And then I would respond again and we just keep going back and forth. And I felt confident that that would end up with a thing at, that I wouldn't know what it would be, but it would be something I would be happy with in the end. And so yeah. I always hope that I can like remember this feeling and remember how this went so that I could like lean on it to trust again for that. Yeah. Cause it's so easy to get in your own way. And, yeah. And, yeah, but this one, it just like, for some reason, I stayed in a pretty good headspace the whole time. And it just made it so fun over all that time and not and knowing, like pr finding ways to allow myself the time on projects to know, like I used to like feel guilty that I would work what I would consider slow, but now I'm like, well, that's just part of the, I, that's the part I like is that's the long process is the joy to me. And that's kind of feels like what the book is about. And so to like, look at what you want to work on and preserve that time and not like put a faster expectation on yourself that makes you not enjoy the whole journey so yeah and if you try to force yourself to work a different way often uh you know you're just going to end up on an even worse detour you know and it's gonna the the book will suffer and the story has to be of primary importance um yeah so i have one more question about sort of like the art and then i have a another another avenue of questions for you okay. so is the so one of my favorite things is the hand lettering so mm -hmm. I was curious if that was always an aspect of it because I feel like this book um to me would be hugely different if it was set in type and if it was uh the hand lettering to me just uh makes it so seamless makes you really feel like you're in this world and you're you're never being tugged back to to be uh, you know, reminded that you're, there's a narrator somewhere above you. You're just sort of immersed. So I'd be curious to hear about that. Yeah, well, thanks. Um, it was always handwritten and I wasn't sure if it would get to stay that way or not. And then I was really happy when they said that they liked the hand lettering once it got bought and that they wanted to save it. Cause I know it's a lot harder to work with. Mm -hmm. um, it causes complications. Um, even in our, um, our test prints for the final with the printer like that was the thing we had to keep fiddling with to get that consistent and to not like get it muddy and so it it is a lot more work but I was so glad that they yeah. believed in that too um one thing that I think it I don't remember if it was Emma Ledbetter or Ann Bobco that they were the ones who suggested that the lead the color of the letter matched the person who was speaking Mm -hmm. because it used to just be like that was the part that changed is I just kind of used color 
in a way that looked good on that page. So it kind of the color kind of changed with the seasons, I think how I had it, but I liked the clarity that that added. Um, and then when they both spoke, it would be like a combination of their two colors together. So that kind yeah. of changed over time. Yeah, it works. It works so well. And it's, it's, uh, it's so much more of an immersive experience. And I feel like it brings you, brings you closer to, to you as the artist. Cause I, I feel like we're seeing your handwriting. It feels like we're, you know, it, it just has this, this looseness about it that is, is just so uh, appealing and immersive. Um, you are like the king of hand lettering. So I appreciate that. So, <laughs> and, yeah. And hearing you, hearing you talk about uh, the problems it causes, like gave me shivers. Cause I've caused, I've caused some problems. Um, I still think it's worth it, but I'm glad yeah. that people I, are willing to do it with you, you know, like. <laughs> I agree. I feel like it, it, it can add a lot um, to, to certain types of books. So, um, so the other thing that I wanted to ask about a couple other things, but one of the thing I wanted to ask about is, um, that picture books occupy, I think, such a special and unique place in, in, in reading culture and in, in, in readers' lives. Um, you know, for me, uh, I, I buy picture books for, for my daughter and, and, primarily, and I love them too, and I read them constantly too, and I buy some just for me, but um, these are being read by adults and being absorbed by adults and the kids alongside them. So I feel like the best picture books, and I feel like this is a perfect example of that, offers something for the reader, whoever it is, you know, zero to, you know, three to 103 or whatever. So um, I'd be curious to hear, uh, any thoughts about that that might have come into your head while writing and also sort of what you hope these different audiences might get out of out of reading this book and having this be a book that becomes a part of their a part of their life and if it's the same for the different ages or if or if you hope that people get something different out of it that's a great question um well one i'm i love picture books more than anything and i it's one of the things that my kids added to my life. Um, I always wanted to be a writer and I wanted to be an artist, but I had never even thought about children's books. It just hadn't, once I wasn't done being a child, I had not really been exposed to them again until I had kids. And reading with my kids is the most precious time of the day. And so picture books quickly became something to me that I feel like have so much meaning um, that have even changed the course of my life or reminded me like who I want to be. Like when I read um, Extra Yarn, 2012, 2013, I can't remember when it came out, um, like Extra Yarn by Mac Burnett and John Clausen reminded me like, oh, this reminds me like this girl who will refuses to become jaded and like makes her world more beautiful by just like standing by that and being generous. Like it reminded me that, oh, that's who I wanted to be as an adult. And like, that's how I felt as an adult rereading it, it reconnected me with like promises I made to myself as a kid. So I get inspired by picture books constantly to like the core of who I am. Mm -hmm. And I think they kind of what we were saying about how kids reconnect us with wonder and curiosity and bigger things. I think picture books, you know, do that also. Um, so I, I feel like there's a, kids and adults might get a lot of similar things out of More Than Sunny, but um, I think kids can have fun with the playfulness of the language and like the fun of continuing the game of like making up your own weather and looking outside and seeing what it could be. I feel like kids can have fun with that aspect of it. Um, but maybe adults might tie more into like the idea of seeing um, looking for wonder and looking beyond the mundane to something else. Um, since that's always one of my favorite things to think about in life is just how like pain and hard things always coexist with beautiful things. And like, sometimes it's good to be reminded of that. And I think that's different than like toxic positivity that like, that's, um, I always think like everyone's life is better if you can look for the good every day. And um, so I kind of hope that's the thing it reminds parents of, or just even reminds them what it feels like to have that sense of wonder. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to, and that, I mean, that's, it's, it's wonderful. And uh, uh, I, I also, something I loved about it and something that I think 
just just personally, I thought about uh, I, I liked how the parents sort of become more prominent sort of later on mm -hmm. and how uh, the dad comes in later on. And it 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 made me think a lot about um, how hopefully we're raising kids and, and having our kids when when they're not with us being this vibrant and joyful and, and being these people when we're not there. And I, I loved getting to see, um, I loved getting to see the kids alone and on their own and, and having that time themselves. And then when the parents were coming in that, you know, they were there too um, and joining the fun, even though the dad is a little bit, a little bit hesitant to go sledding. Yes. Um, and the mom's a little hesitant to go outside in the cold at the one point. Too. Right. Well, I mean, she's she's got her socks on and a book. Yes. And, and a and a and a coffee. Um, <laughs> I mean, that picture is is pretty much paradise right there. Like, is there anything <laughs> better than that? You know, the, the dogs curled up. <laughs> uh, yeah, I could feel those socks on my feet. Um, yeah, there's there's nothing better than that. One of my favorite um, moments in my life that my kids kind of took me out of my adultness <laughs> was um, they were begging me to go outside and go dance in the rain one time. And it was cold, cold, cold rain. And I did not want to go out there. Just like that mom, I was like, it's so cold. It's too cold. And they were like, you don't think about things like temperature when you're dancing in the rain. And they were so insulted that I yeah. <laughs> they could, can't be too cold to dance in the rain. Your, your so, priorities are all out of whack. Yes. So I was thinking about that when I was drawing her being super cozy and not wanting to leave that. But yeah. then when you make yourself go outside of it, it, you know, it changes the trajectory of your day. Yeah. It makes me think of, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you know Peppa Pig, but yes. <laughs> every, every episode of Peppa Pig ends with the whole family on the floor, rolling around laughing, often in mud. And it's just like, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a wonderful thing. It like just reminds you like, this is, this is the end goal. This is what, this is what matters. Yes. Um, so we talked about this briefly. I'm just keeping an eye on the time, but we talked about this briefly before uh, we open this up to everyone. But um, I'd be curious about this book, um, but also just more generally, what what has um, this past year done for you as a creator, as a storyteller? Um, how has it uh, changed the way you work, maybe practically, but how has it changed? Has it changed the way that you are gonna approach the next project you take on and the next uh, things you do. Um, um, I just feel like it's, it's hard not to ask that question as we hopefully are starting to, you know, come out of this a little bit, hopefully. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I think the pandemic kind of continued something I was already, a path I was already starting to go down. I had gotten really burned out. It was, suffering like some health effects from that. And so I had already kind of decided I need to slow down. Like it's okay to say no to projects, even if I would love doing the project, because if it's not good for my health or if I'm not getting to spend enough time with my kids or whatever, if I, it's okay to say no to things. And even if someone else has time for that thing, if I don't, it's okay. And that's a hard, hard decision. Um, but so I was doing a lot of that kind of soul searching right before that happened. So it kind of forced me to keep that commitment going into this time period because you know you're you're home my kids were home um and so it forced me to just be in the moment more and um one of our favorite things this whole time has just been like watching our bird feeders watching the squirrels and just having all those small moments together so I think it just really reinforced how important it is to live quiet and slow at least for me and just um not rush myself, not commit to things, even if they sound like exciting things to just really analyze what's the right project for me right now, what will bring the most joy to my life overall. Um, so I think it's just made me make some different choices, like making picture books right now was like the perfect thing because I can pop in and out of making it. Like when I'm writing something longer, I have to be so much more concentrated. We're working on a picture book for one, it makes me think in joyful terms, like I'm not trying to solve any plot problem. I'm right. a smaller scale type of thing. And so 
I feel like it's just kept me in a joyful spot and it makes me be able to like work on it with my kids or I'm thinking about it all the time, but I don't have to have like 10 hours of straight time to work on it. So I feel like it's changed maybe like the formats that I can work on right now. And I, I think just the slowness of life this year has made me realize how much that that works well with me. And I, I felt reinvigorated creatively. I started playing the guitar, which I've wanted to do my entire life. And I, my husband bought it for me for Christmas, which was the nicest gift in the world. And just trying something that I'm really bad at, that I have no idea how to do and watch yourself get better at something every day. Um, that like, I started thinking in poems again. And like, it just really like took me back to the beginning of like loving to make things. And so, I think I will be much more like committed to maintaining that and knowing that that's, you know, somehow within life getting busier to maintain that like quiet, safe space to just love making things just for the joy of it and still enjoying all those quiet, quiet moments in life. Yeah. I love, I, I love the, the guitar, how you talked about guitar because it's sort of similar to you going to the store and getting a bunch of stuff that you've never, that you've never, um, used before and that you're unfamiliar with it's sort of like forcing sort of play and exploration and discovery into your life um it's 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 great and i feel like i feel like this is like uh your your philosophy in, in a picture book sort of like you've put it all down for us hopefully we can read it and we can all take it to heart and remember it um yeah so Last thing, can you tell us about what, what you are working on at all? Is, is there anything you can tell us about what's sure. coming from you? Probably not details, but I am really close to starting the final artwork on my second picture book. Okay. So I'm really excited. Um, More Than Sunny was a two book deal. So there was always gonna be a second picture book. And um, I, I was probably about two years ago that I was driving down the road and had this very specific joyful feeling about something and I could picture the beginning of a picture book and I could picture how it ended but I didn't know the rest of it and so for the last two years I've been slowly working on that one in a very similar manner to the way I worked on More Than Sunny um and so the words are like almost nailed down and we I just need the art notes before I start final art and so that's what I'm going to be doing like through now through the like beginning of August. So I'm really excited. And at that same point where I've done the rough art and I like it, but I have to decide, you know, what's the final art going to look like? Do I, am I playing it too safe or how can I be even more loose or whatever? So I'm kind of like in that spot again, where I'm trying to figure out what to do to get myself in that same like playful, like not try to reinvent the wheel or make it overcomplicated at all, but find a way to make it a new exploration of some kind. So. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm really excited. Oh, thanks. Um, cool. Was there, is there anything, uh, we're coming up to the time that we're supposed to do some Q&A. Is there anything that you uh, wanted to share, or discuss that I didn't uh, let bring up? Or are there any images that you shared uh, that you still have that you, you thought it would be cool to show or? I don't even, that's a good question, but I, let I me, mean, see if there's anything else real quick yeah there you go I think I just oh I know one thing that was just kind of cool is I think it's really interesting how you know how you were talking about how you change over the long arc of a book and you needed all of these like you needed to become a different person or whatever so I liked thinking about all the things along the way that became part of how you what you put into your book and so mm -hmm. one of the things I was thinking about is at some point I was reading Mary Oliver's book Up, Upstream and in it she was quoting Walt Whitman while talking about nature being the solace to her and this joy even in the midst of hardship so I really was relating to everything she was saying and then ran across this um, part from Fields of Grass where Whitman said, unscrew the locks from the doors, unscrew the doors themselves from their jams. And so I kept thinking about that a lot when I was working on the artwork, how both like the exuberance of like throwing off the doors and just getting out there. And then I was thinking a lot of, it made me think about doors in general. So that was in my mind a lot when I was making the book. It's like how the door is this vehicle. Um, it's like safety. Like sometimes you're looking back at the door like, especially for kids, like that's my home. But then it's also this vehicle to the outside or back to your inside. And so um, 
I had all of these goals for how to use the doors in the book and some of them I didn't get to do and some I did, but it was kind of fun. And then I was also thinking about how like visual references come into your story that you don't even realize sometimes. And when I was looking through photos recently, I found these ones of one of my sister and I from when we were younger. And I felt like there was such a vibe there of the kids in my book. Yeah. Um, just like the shoes and the pants and the jacket, like everything about it. I'm like, it was just interesting how you can like channel your own childhood without realizing it. And then my son Nolan is in these other pictures in his yellow coat. And that day is like a day of my life that's cemented in there forever when like when, when Nolan was born was at the beginning of the recession and my husband and I both lost our jobs and we lost our house and it was like a really weird uncertain time and so we were living in our in-laws house and the weight of it was a lot at that moment on this specific day and it was raining outside and then Nolan wanted to go outside and play so I reluctantly went out there which reminds me a lot of more than sunny and then we had the nicest day like it's forever imprinted in my brain he was just playing with his dinosaurs in the puddles and Matthew was jumping in the puddles and it just reminded me like we lost everything but we still have everything that matters and then I was just thinking of Nolan's yellow coat and that like I've got this yellow coat in the book and how like was that in my head or not I don't know but anyway it's just cool to me how yeah. so many pieces of your life even visual vocabulary you're gathering along the way yeah. and become part of what you make and you don't even realize it and I love how I love how you you and your your sister are up against a door, like yeah. in here, and 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 Nolan's uh, little um, the floaty thing is bright red, and this door is red. There's all sorts of connections, and the door um, I didn't ask about the door, but the the door was such a sharp visual reminder when it when it came back and it was bright red. It was like such an anchor um, for for the story and for the for the family, but. Um, opening it up just seemed like to let all the wonder in. And I thought, I thought that uh, worked as a visual metaphor and also just a metaphor um, beautifully throughout. Um, yeah, I just can't say, I've been raving about the book for days uh, <laughs> to, <been> very kind. <laughs> to you and on social media, but it, it's, just, um, it's just a masterpiece. It's just, it's just incredible. Every single page, the whole thing together. Um, Congratulations. It's, um, you should be beyond proud of, of it. It's a, it's a stunning, it's a stunning work of art. Thank you so much, Jared. I appreciate that. Yeah. It was uh, a total joy to work on. I'm so grateful. I should say, I'm so grateful for every part of the team that worked on this book. I'm so grateful for my agent, Stephen, who was truly like at the other half of this book. And then, um, Emma Ledbetter was the editor on this and it was just a joy to work with her and, and Bob Coe and Heather Kelly. Like, I feel like they made it this beautiful thing. Like when I got the, um, the proofs and it was just big flat pages and I saw how big it was. And then when it came and I saw the paper, like they just made it such a beautiful piece of art. Also, they brought so much to it. And I'm really grateful just for everybody that helped make the book and it's just so, that's one of my favorite things in life is true collaboration like that and how it makes something yeah. better than you could ever make alone. And it, that's how life is too. And so making books is, is also a metaphor for just the beauty of life and being with other people and what everybody else brings. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you all did an incredible job. Um, uh, so lastly, I feel like I, it would, I, 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 I would have to ask this is it, what does Matthew think of the book? Is he pleased with it? He <laughs> his, really is. Book? He's like the most brutal critic in general in life. Like he's, <laughs> he's, he's rough. He's, he's a good, um, I always tell him that he would be a great editor, but he would make everyone cry. And he yeah. always knows they wouldn't cry when their book's on the bestseller list. <laughs> right. He's very hilarious. But anyway, he is very enamored with the book and he's proud of it. He he can pick things apart, but this one, because it was his idea, I think, um, and because he got to be part of the process, he feels pretty um, proud of it. Even though he tends to be a cynic, he's not about this one. I'm glad. Well, he might need to read the book a few more times if he's, if he's already a cynic. <laughs> I know. <laughs> he needs to let some of that wonder back in. I know he has his wonder in his own ways, but he still sees life through a very unique lens. But yeah. I think it's that 15 year old, you know, you gotta try to, be, try to be jaded. Yeah. <laughs> Deep down you're not. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know it from experience, but I've never, I've never had to parent one. So I'll be calling you when, 
when my children are are at that age. Okay, that sounds uh, awesome. Are, is it question and answer time? Do you think? Yeah, I think so. If oh, there you are. Rosie. Hi. I wasn't sure if you guys wanted me. We got one comment um, from a Christina A. And she says, congratulations on your new book. Oh, okay. um, but I just wanted this to kind of serve as a reminder for other people to feel free to submit questions into the question and answer portion of this. Um, I actually have a couple questions of my own, if that's okay, to kind of get the ball rolling. Um, I was wondering what it was like to use your family as an inspiration in a, in a work of art and a book. Uh, I think that that part just comes naturally because... Um, like we were talking about how kids just like have that way of seeing the world with fresh eyes and so um I feel like they're always inspiring me and sometimes they like it and sometimes they don't like I'm working on a different book right now and my my younger son's like hey don't tell that story don't use that one that's embarrassing I'm like but it's really funny and so but this one uh they're all okay with and I feel like it's just too hard not to use those moments because they bring so much joy and um I don't know, like just the fresh eyes of a child. So I, half my inspiration is always them. That's wonderful. And I really like hearing and seeing how you go from the creative process to the actual book. You guys throughout this whole conversation, which has been lovely, um, have watched that line really nicely. Um, and my second question is a little bit more about the creative process. Um, I was wondering, do images come first or do the words come first? Or how is it being both an author and illustrator? Yeah, that's such an interesting question. And it's a hard question for me to answer because I think it's both. Usually, um, I'm usually like thinking in both simultaneously. Um, yeah, I don't even know if there's, a, th there's times when the words are leading and there's times when the art is leading. And I know um, I'm trying to learn to trust more in the visual because I think sometimes I think like I'm picturing the images before I know the words that go with it. Um, like the ending of the book, I kept not knowing the words, but I kept picturing the sequence. And so then I just drew the sequence anyway, and then let it find its way. Um, but then sometimes the word, like the words are the thing that inspired it in the first place saying Sunny and Birdie. So it's definitely a mixture. And when I'm working even on Beatrice stuff, like I'm constantly going back between them. And there's times I have to force myself to put one or two, one or the other away if it's distracting me, but I'm usually flipping back and forth and kind of leaning on each side of myself as I go. Thank you. Um, just a final reminder, we are open Q&A if you guys wanna submit anything or even just a comment. Um, yeah, thank you both for such a wonderful conversation. Um, links are in the chat to purchase this book from the bookstore. Um, are there any final closing remarks that either of you wanted to make? Well, I just wanted to say thank you so much to Jarrett for um, being such a wonderful conversation partner and asking such good questions. And uh, Jarrett always inspires me. Everything about the, even just your generosity with your creativity is such a gift to kids everywhere, teachers everywhere, and creators everywhere. Like, I don't know how you have the energy to do it, but I um, appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. And I also just wanted to say that I feel like it's yellow cover night. And so I have to give like a little shout out. Oh, to thank you. Jared's new book is <laughs> give this book a cover thank and you. the engineered series oh, thank the yellow you. cover. But this book is so inspirational. Um, it's filled with activities for kids. Um, but what's cool about it is I feel like everything that Jarrett makes, like it might look like it's just fun, but really underneath it all is so much depth. And so I don't know. I'm, I just really appreciate you as a creator and I appreciate what you're bringing to kids. And so I recommend highly all of Garrett's books. So just wanted to say that. And also thank you to Literati for having us tonight and for doing the pre-order campaign because you were so lovely, Rosie. And I had so much fun doing all the pre-orders and just being in the space yesterday. Thank you. We do have a couple of final, um, final comments from a Mrs. Moore. Okay. It, she says, this was like a mini nerd camp reunion. Love to hear from both of you. Congrats to both of you for your new books. Hugs. Aww. Is it is it Angie? Yeah. Awesome. Hi, Angie. Hi, Thank you Angie. so much. You're awesome. <laughs> I wish I miss nerd camp so much. I know. So pretend we're virtually, we're in, we're there. <laughs> if only. Aww. It's so nice to see how supported you both are. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. 
Well, thank you. Thank you for this wonderful conversation. And, you know, going back and forth, like I said, between the creative process and the actual book itself was just fascinating to hear. Um, so thank you both. And thank you, Jarrett, for moderating. Um, yeah. Thank you, Shelly, for creating such a beautiful work of art. Oh, thank um, you. Yeah, thank you both. I think, you know, we're kind of wrapping up for the evening. Well, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming and joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. It was an honor to be a part of this, Shelly. And thank you, Literati. You're welcome. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Bye, everyone. Good night. <laughs>